Hey ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the Premier League sponsored by Twitch TV, hosted by Ainge and presented to you guys by DotaCompears.com. I'm Luminous from DC and of course you can check me on YouTube as well. Today we're casting XP versus Mineski. Mineski on game number 3 out of 4 of their non-stop Dota spree they just faced against SK. If you guys min miss any parts of those games, the VODs will be available on DotaCompears.com shortly after this broadcast. But it's going to be XP versus Mineski. We are playing on US West, so the European XP and of course the Pinoy uh, Mineski would both be having some lag issues. So should be okay for that part, but picks and bans well underway. Four standard bans on both sides. For those of you guys that do not know, XP is Lotus team, a uh, very old school player in XP. Evidently stands for experience, you know, ironic or not, or maybe... That's exactly why they stand for experience, because they are definitely very veteran experienced players. Um, this roster is very reminiscent of 2008 SK roster that tore through everything. Loda Aki, Mirko, Pinoy, who's going to be playing against Pinoy, and Copycat. I mean, on the other side, it's going to be RR Jules, May, J, and Roots. Very, very standard lineup here for Mineski. Lich is going to be the opening pick here for Mineski, who by the way had two really really tough game against SK. SK really aggressive early lineup and just really pushed down Mineski fairly easily. Um, let's see if they can be fearing any better today here against XP who generally does like to play aggressive as well and this is Lodas kind of his own spin on the metagame. He always opens pick with Venomancer really first or second pick Venomancer before heroes like Windrunner, before heroes um, sometimes even before Tie Hunter, and uh, well, he feels comfortable with Venomancer. Venomancer does add a lot to you. He's a very versatile in that regard. He lanes in multiple lanes. Uh, he plays support. He can play solo. He sometimes could even play on the long lane. We've definitely seen Boots Venomancer in that regard. Um, he provides team fight capability. He provides defensive capability. He pushes nicely. He ganks nicely. There's many things that Venomancer does. And uh, whether he's worth the first pick, though, that is up for debate. As we see, Tie Hunter gonna be a second pick as well. We are back in here, Mineski here. Lich, of course, provides that laning. We we are very very uh, we we see commonly of that. And my question is whether we're gonna see some type of DK play, Slaughter play, or Queen of Pain play here from Mineski, because to me, I think they are the three. Uh, these three heroes are somewhat introduced in the pro scene. Uh, by Mineski, other teams in, uh, in the past have picked it up and popularized it, but Mineski, first team to really bring it to the table, it's going to be a Weaver here. So Weaver Lich, I presume, is going to be on the bottom lane here for Mineski, because that's generally a very common way to lane the two on the difficult lane. Lich is going to be using his sacrifice to pull the creep equilibrium closer and closer to the tower, and then you have a Weaver, who is generally a difficult to kill hero, simply because of his Sakuchi. So what I'm guessing, and this is a purely a guess here, that I'll be looking for a solo mid and a, a dual lane top. But that could change very differently depending on the hero they're going to pick up. It's going to be a Sven, a very interesting hero. We do not see Sven uh, that often in the pro scene simply because he's not too useful in laning. I mean, two seconds stun at level 1 is really good. But he only drops off one stun because of his small mana pool. We never really see stuns outside of the support role, which I personally believe stun, uh, Sven has the capability to go into a semi-carry role. Let's see if that's what Mineski is going to show us today. I don't believe Mineski plays with Sven as a semi-carry, but it's been a long time I've seen Sven overall, and that might change. We'll see. Winrun is going to be the third pick here for the Radiant side, as we see Spectre being banned, a very interesting ban. Um, apparently Spectre is trending up because we've seen him in both games today so far, and he's another hero getting banned now. Honestly, we haven't seen too many Spectres at all, generally because the heroes that are running around like Void and uh, Lifestealer, to be more exact, counter Spectre Hardcore. So I'm not too sure why he's getting so much pick, but hey, it's good enough for them, good enough for me. Windrunner, and of course, it's going to be the third pick here for the Radiant side. I wonder if any team's going to go into a Shadow Shaman. Definitely a very trendy pick lately, simply because he does so much. Disables, push, uh, nukes, you know what I mean? The complete package. Beastmaster is going to be the ban here for XP. <clears throat> a little bit worried about the inner beast aura, but more exactly worry about that four second disable from the Beastmaster roar. And with that in mind, they might be going for something like Life Stealer. They might be going something like a Void, who really depends on every precious second of auto attacking. And if you have a Beastmaster roar sending for four seconds, that can be issue. So I'm guessing just be based on the Beastmaster ban, that's a hero that. 
that's a couple of those carry hero sets are what Loda is looking into, but we don't really know for sure. Star is going to be the fourth band here for the Dire Side, which makes a lot of sense. The Amplifier damage is going to be annoying for the Weaver to deal with. He, he could definitely deal with it, given the fact that he has time lapse, but it's going to just be annoying overall. And the, uh, well, the minus, whatever, 16 armor, I think it was, for the Amplified damage at level 16, would just be annoying to deal with, even if you have Frost armor, so they're going to get rid of that. It's, he's a very, very tanky hero overall, and Mineski loves to kill people with spell damage. Uh, as we saw in the last game, we saw Ancient Aberration, Queen of Bane, that's definitely very, their playing style, they just nuke you down. And uh, well, we have Sven, we have a Sven here, we have a Lich here that's very nuke heavy, and Slaughter, fairly good, fairly tanky against nukes overall. So they're going to get rid of that. Loda taking a little bit of time with their last pick, evidently not reading, well, okay, Crystal Maiden is going to be their ban. Pretty decent ban, I say. I actually would have opted for Venge, to be completely honest. Um, simply because the minus armor would be really nicely stacked up on the Swarm and on the tier. But Crystal Maiden makes sense as well, because Crystal Maiden will be providing some very, very important aura to that Sven and the uh, Weaver, who both run through EXP or run through mana fairly quickly. So it makes sense here. Of course, Crystal Maiden providing that valuable slow and. Uh, it's decent slow. 30% slow on the movement speed, 20% slow on the attack speed. Very, very nice. The cards are back in uh, back in the Dyer's hand, and they're going to pick up a Dragon Knight immediately. So, seems with this Dragon Knight pick, we might see something different. In a sense, the bot lane Lich Weaver, that is still a possibility. We see a support plus Sven on the top lane here, and Dragon Knight on the solo mid position. But what we're more likely to see is some sort of trialing involving the Sven as a support, maybe involving Weaver as a carry, DK solo, and maybe something like a Quap solo. Um, but again, these heroes are very versatile in terms of laning, uh, so we can't really count them in any situation right now. So back to the Radiant side, we're looking at DK, we're looking at Sven, and we're looking at Weaver. All of them plus Frost Armor are somewhat difficult to kill. They're tanky heroes, uh, or that they have time lapse, and they have high armor already. And then you now have to deal with frost armor on top of that. How are you actually going to bring down this tanky force? And that's exactly what the Radiant side is thinking. Of course, Ancient Apparition is in the pool, and you can kind of bring him down uh, magically on that side. Necrolite is in the pool, though I haven't seen any team pick him up. Um, so there, there are answers uh, to kind of burst people down in the magical side. In terms of physical DPS, Lifestealer is in the pool. Although Lifestealer against frost armor is somewhat eh. I mean, slows your attack speed. So there's option here for Loda, and I'm pretty sure he's thinking uh, about one each uh, very carefully. Or, that is an option as well. You're going to go for the initiation route, and they do have very strong initiation so far. Storm Spirit adds to that. Windrunner Shackle Shot is always a good initiation. And of course, Tie Hunter with Ravage, especially if he picks up a, a Blink Dagger or if teammates force staff him in. That's going to be a very key initiation as well. But my worry still remains, are they going to do enough damage? And there is a go, Lifestealer is going to be the anti-tank, anti-Sven, anti-DK, uh, and also if Lifestealer decides to pick up an Orchid, he could play as the anti-Weaver role as well. Lion's going to be the last pick for the Dire side to kind of, uh, as a counter storm, hex him up, really do the damage. Uh, so both teams are very, very mobile. Uh, of course, the Radiant team a little bit more mobile, given the fact that they have a very, very good ganking combination. Of course, you can infest into the storm. The storm could zip right in your face, a double gank immediately, and you probably will die before you actually do anything. So the ganking power definitely in favor of XP. In terms of pushing, uh, neither team really excelling in it, uh, but of course, uh, there is a Venomancer on the Radiant side, so they have that sort of going for them. Alright, let's look at who's playing what here. Lotus is going to be playing the Lifestealer. Mirko on the TIE Hunter. Aki is going to be playing the Venomancer. Uh, Pie Cat or Copycat here is going to be on the Storm Spirit. And on the top lane here we have Pinoy. Going to be playing the Windrunner. On the other side, looks like Jules is going to be playing a solo mid DK. And we're going to see some Shadow Blade DK. I'm calling it Shadow Blade DK. Very legit stuff. Jay is going to be on the Weaver. RR lit on the Lich. Uh, May gonna be on the line, and we're gonna have Sven on the top lane. So yes, we are gonna have Sven on the carry roll. Yes, indeed. I think did he buy the chicken? Uh, he has what? No, he's on support. Yeah, this is Woots playing him. Woots usually plays a support hero, and we have a soaring recipe on the line. What? 
Alright, Soul Ring Recipe Online, as we see a little, might be a little bit of engagement on the spot lane. This is very, very strange. When I saw these two guys walking in the lane, I was like, yes! Sven's gonna get the farm. He's actually gonna be a useful hero. But maybe not, we'll see. We will see. Weaver's gonna be hugging the rune spot. He's gonna find himself a haste rune, which is gonna be nice. And here's that interesting dual lane, or not interesting dual lane. This dual lane we see a lot, a lot. And the reason it's being so good, all this you really have to do is stay by tower and keep denying. Just keep denying. Forget, like, don't even care about getting EXP. Just keep denying. And then slowly we're gonna have the EXP go towards your tower and then you're gonna get exp that way but what the thing that the uh, diary team did not do which is very very important in this strategy is you have to block off the pool camp if you don't block off the pool camp the enemy team is gonna stack this camp and then do a stack pool and that's gonna de deny four creeps and uh, lich well he i mean he could deny one every 30 seconds but he can't deny four creeps by himself so really that's exactly what we see the response here from XP and that's the perfect response and I do believe not having this camp block it looks like he's going to do a standard pool which is fine I mean, nonetheless any pool is good so really XP is going to have the advantage in this lane for a long long while simply because that camp is not blocked off Aki doing some good harass here against the uh, weaver keeping him back on the top lane here, we have Sven hiding in the jungle, and that's going to be enough to keep Pino back. He really have not got a single point of EXP. He knows that there's a Sven missing around, and of course this ward is going to see that. Unfortunately for Sven, he will not be doing any creep pulls. Uh, so, uh, he's not going to get be getting too much EXP either. And again, exactly for this Lich, going to stay close to tower, keep denying. You can see that he has, got, his, has not got any single points of EXP, but that's not what he's in the lane for. He's in the lane to be uh, to keeping the Weaver safe. So checking the farm on the mid lane here, PyCat level 2.5, almost hitting 3, and DK hitting 3 as well. This lane is going to be fairly even for the most part, but uh, Jules is going to be bottle crawling it up like a champ, and he's going to sooner or later going to using that Fire Breath uh, to spam and harass, and that's going to keep Copycat really low. Also, given the fact that the Stormster not really having the best spell to push the Creep Wave, that means that the uh, Jules is going to have a fairly easy time to Fire Breath spam and ensure himself that he gets a rune as well. Double damage rune is going to spawn on the bot lane, and look at how good Miracle is. Already in position to pick that one up to deny the rune to the other team. And Lich uh, might be going into position. Miracle will not see him, and Lich can actually den uh, kill the double damage rune if he wants to do so. Den kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. No, what are you doing? And now we have Miracle picking up the double damage. His gush is coming off core down 5 seconds, 4 seconds. Here comes Pycat. A single gush into a pool, and that Lich is going to be dead. Lich barely makes it into fog. Miracle, is it going to dive? They do see him still for now. Miracle waiting, waiting for the gush. I think Lich is going to be fine. Yes, completely fine as well. He actually bait out yet a second gush, and he's going to salvo completely okay. Uh, that death actually really or excuse me that uh the fact that he didn't die was really big because we had storm Sir leaving the lane for a bit we had the uh tie hunter leaving the lane for a bit and we also had lola leaving the lane for a bit that meant weaver was getting free farm so um that move was it worked out really nicely for Mineski there back on the top lane here let's see how our support or how our carry lines farming. i mean there's a soul ring here and i mean or you don't generally see Soul Rings online simply because he doesn't really need it. Uh, he, I mean, he's short in mana, especially after using Finger of Death. But generally, a lot of players just opting for things like Intelligence Treads, and that generally gives you enough. Uh, but now it looks like Sven is getting some farm instead. Sven's got a Magic Stick, which is very interesting. But that's okay. Back in the mid lane here, Mirko is uh, camping, is roaming on the top lane, maybe trying to set up a gank. Yeah, he's calling for help, or Windman is calling for help. And here comes a TIE Hunter. Uh, we don't, I don't think the Dire team knows. And here you go, we're going to have a little bit of a, a little bit of harassment. And TIE Hunter is going to come around and make out to be careful. A single gush and a power shot's going to do it. Yeah, that's the first blood. I have no idea what Lion was looking at. And that's another reason why you don't get Soul Ring online. He's already a very frail hero. You pop a Soul Ring, you're losing 150 HP, especially this early in the game. And it's going to hurt. So, that was a very strange play. It was just a very strange exchange of events on the top lane here. But, Jules got his bottle. And looks like he's going to be swinging on the bot lane. He finds himself a haste rune. And that's going to be a very, very good rune, especially if he wants to set up a gank on Loda. Loda has level 2 of Rage, level 1 of Feast, and level 1 of Open Wounds. And here we go. Hastrin being picked up here on the DK. Is he going to be just going back in the mid lane? It looks like he did. Is. But with the Bottle Crawl, you can see how he has constantly mana for that Fire Breath spam. And that's going to keep PyCat low. What One thing that Jules need to work on is actually when he's uh, using his Fire Breath, should hit the creeps and also on the PyCat and make him a little bit, uh, waste a little bit of regen. But it's okay. Jules knows exactly what he's doing a lot better than I do. So let's give him the benefit of that. 
Back in the bottom here, Loda doing a very really good job actually harassing the tower quite a bit. And uh, as a Lich, you gotta be somewhat careful in terms of your tower getting pushed because you're constantly denying your own creeps, right? So, right now here we have uh, Jay trying his best to last it under the tower, having a little bit of difficulty doing so. Pycat level 5 and half will be hitting fairly, 6 fairly soon. And same thing with DK. DK, despite going off the lane to get the runes, got the XP still. So back on top lane, looks like we had a kill on the top. And we, oh, gotta be somewhat careful, Sven. Uh, but maybe he realized that there was no mana up on Miracle. Yep, Miracle is completely out of mana at this point. He does have Boots of Speed. Uh, Sven got to be somewhat careful. He's going to get a south past him, and he's going to have go for Boots of Speed, which is going to be nice. Unfortunately for him, he will not have a mana for Stormboat. Um, so that's that's a little bit uh, unfortunate for him. And oh, Windrunner is going to find himself. And of course, Miracle still does not have the mana. Do so they could. There's a Shackle Shot on May. Impale goes on Mirgo. A couple more right clicks is gonna do the job. Mirgo is gonna go down. There you go. And Pino being surrounded by two hero. I'll bet these two heroes are very low HP. Do we have Hex? Do we have Hex? Looks like we just barely have enough mana for Hex. He's very low HP. The creep's gonna do the work. But very fortunately for Sven, he killed the Windrunner before Lion died. That means Windrunner did not get any EXP in that exchange. On the top bot line here, it looks like Jay's gonna be completely focused down by two hero. I don't know what exactly he was doing. Maybe he used a Kuchi. To Come in to jack the creep, uh, trying to jack the creep kills between Sakuchi. Cool down the fact that there's Sentry Ward in the ground. A couple of slow it allowed Loda to pick up a free kill on a Weaver, and that's definitely not what you account for in this uh, very early stage of the game. So, very unfortunate for the uh, Mineski team that they lost to carry for basically nothing. So, very, very unfortunate. But back in middle here, Jules using that bottle crow strat will be pushing the tower and uh, doing significant damage of harass against PyCat. PyCat does have boots and bottle, but really is constantly losing creep wave under his own tower. So, gotta be really, really careful about that. Back on the bot lane here, we do have 1300 gold here on the Lifestealer. He can pick up Treads right now if he wants to do so, and looks like that's exactly what he's gonna do. No, nope, he's gonna opt for Helm of Iron. We're gonna be going for a very early armlet, um, but he's gonna go back to Treads, so no big deal. We have a teleportation coming in the mid lane in the form of a Sven, but that's a very bold move. I don't think they can actually kill the Storm Surge, but here comes Lion. He's going for an Impale. He's going to get it, but miscommunication. No, he's going to be just going for a solo kill. I thought he wasn't even level 6 yet, but looks like we're going to have engagement here in this wall. Sven going to see into a Tide Hunter Stormbow. Go right in the face of Mirko. Dragon Tail is going to be in position as well. Perfect chain stun here coming in, and there's an Impale to make sure that they get the kill. May jacks that one up, but I don't think they really care about missing any kills. Smoke of the Seat gets popped, immediately gets to the spell. They do see Pinoy up on the high ground. But no big deal. The reason that why Sven is some, or used to be played a lot as a support is he's the only support that has a free double damage room whenever you need it. So as a support hero go, he actually does drop quite a bit of DPS, especially in the laning and ganking phase. So he, he's loved a lot in that regard. Uh, but generally he tapers off in terms of his usefulness in the mid game stage because he really is a melee hero. Uh, so support melees with only a, a non, very non spammable stun. Have a little bit of trouble uh, dealing with it. it. Looks like double damage is going to be right on the line, and line can actually get a kill on Copycat if he's not careful enough. Couple of hits, he will have mana for hex. There's a hex, and do we have DK coming in? No, it looks like DK is not really in position. It looks like May is going to go down. Mirko in position to fight against the DK, and I think that was a really bad communication from Mineski, as uh, DK should have been right there, and they would have got a kill. On the storm, so obviously they did not have sight over here, so it was you know they are all playing under fog, so it's you know definitely excusable that they did not see it coming. Back on the bottom here, Jay farming against Loda. I would assume Loda is out farming him by quite a bit. So we're eight minutes, nine minutes, and let's do a quick farm check real fast. We have 44 on the life stealer. Weaver's got 21. So Miniski definitely getting out farm on the bot lane. But DK's at 42, and he's out farming the storm server by quite a bit. On the top lane here, Windrunner's only got 17. 19's on the support spend. It looks like Lion's got 19 as well. So they're splitting the farm there. No big deal. I think the farm is somewhat even for the most part. Um, I, I say the radiant is leading by a tiny bit, but you know, really nothing too big. I mean, we had a kill on Dragon Eye on the mid lane. Sorry for missing that. Here comes Lion though. There's a hex. Are they gonna chain sun this one perfectly? There's a rage. Oh, where's your chain sun, guys? Uh, but they didn't have the finger of death anyway, so they would not have gotten the kill. Back in the mid lane, I'm not sure how they got the kill there. Uh, did Tie Hunter use his Ravage? It seems like he did, and that's should be enough to to get the kill. And here comes Tie Hunter on the bot lane. Uh, we did not have wars from the dire side to see the Tie Hunter coming, so this is like, going to be a blind gank. There's one slow, there's another slow. They have three slow, but they are not going to kill the Weaver, so that's an issue unless they have Sentry Wards. 
But even so, Sakuchi put you in 522 movement speed. Here comes Lion. He's going to run right into two hero. Is he going to get a two-man impale? There's a two-man impale, but he slowed down so much. He does have four charge on the magic wand. Should be eating a tango. He's going to get a kill on Aki. I think one more hit's going to do it. So nicely done for him. It was a 1v4 situation, and he traded one for one. That's all you can ask for. Stormster gets himself a regen rune. That's going to be nice. And he can actually set up a gank on the bottom. And Jay might be in a little bit of trouble. Do we have any true sight? No, we do not. Tide Hunter did get... Oh, they're going to go right on Jay anyways. Did do some really nice damage to him. Back in the mid lane, Tower under a lot of focus. And looks like Tower is going to get picked off by Jules' poison damage. And here comes the Nyx teleporting in. They're going to get a kill on Storm. Nicely done, despite the fact that he had a regen rune. Loda looking for uh, for Jules. Jules has a lot of regen under his bottle. He's really quick, given the fact that he has Tread. But here comes Loda. He has open wound on cooldown fairly soon. Sven's going to come around to help out, and that's going to scare away. Now Loda goes right on the uh, Sven. Realize that he does not have mana for the Storm Bolt yet. A single Gush is going to do the job. No, we're going to have R coming right now. Do we have Nova Blast? Nova Blast? No Nova Blast. But DK does have a lot of mana. Three man Gale. They're going to focus on Aki. I do believe this is over aggressive. As you see, Dragon Tail goes on Loda. Dragon Form is out right now. And he's trying to run away. He's very slow down. There's open wounds and they're life stealing like crazy. Jules might be going down. Me off the screen. We did see Lich going down. Can Jules make it out alive? Poison damage. Nice damage. Doing so much. But he's regening. Plus Frost Armor. They're okay for now. Can we get off yet another Gale? Stormster zips in right now to ensure they get the kill. Life still got the last hit there. So nice. Nicely done. Long chase. Long, long chase. As we see, Stormster has a regen rune, so he's just going crazy with his mana regeneration. Doesn't even hear. Don't get your. Oh, he's got a cancel. So, very, very unfortunate. Is he going to find himself? Oh, he's going to find himself at the May. There's a pull. There's a couple of more right clicks there. Going to get the kill for sure. May trying to juke. He might get off. Can he get off the impale? Two man impale. Two man impale. Loda had the rage up, so they're going to get a kill as well. May, by the way, playing really aggressive, almost to the point of maybe even bad play, but because he's just going into uncharted territory, he died like over here, um, he died over here as well, like, he's going into these woods blind, and that's really aggressive play, so he's got to be very, very careful of that, and because the fact that Mineski is down on play right now, XP feeling a lot more confident pushing down this mid lane, and they will do it right now, who's going to get the kill, looks like Aki, with his uh, Serpent Wards, got the kill, but meanwhile on the bot lane, Jay's got a lot of free farm, so... Let's see what he's going to pick up with the free farm. Just a TP scroll, so no boots yet. Uh, we might see some type... Oh, no, he's going to TP on top lane and get the free farm there. Checking out the gold difference here. We do see a slight lead from the tower kill on the Radiant side, but nothing too big. But here comes XP. They're going to be setting up yet another gang. Arcane boots being popped. They're meet that, that Ravage is off cooldown. So they could go for a kill on Lich for sure. They might even get a kill on DK. They are going to focus on Lich. There's a pull. There's a Rav. One kill right now. They're going to focus on Jewel. Gush coming up for him. And here comes the line though. There's a Hex. They do have the Finger of Death. They could get the kill for sure. Finger. Finger. There we go. Going to get the kill here. Uh, but we do have Venomaster coming around. May might be going down once again, indeed he will. Uh, Jules trying to focus on Miracle, but Miracle very quick for support, given the fact that he had Ar Arcane, but here comes Tide, taking a Storm Bolt to the face. Sven in position to make sure they get that kill. Trading a Storm and a Tide Hunter for a Lion and a Lich. I think that uh, trade went in the favor of the Dire Side, since that Jules was in position to grab all the EXP, so... Um, they're happy for that. We have a recipe, a Shadow Blade recipe. What did I say? They love uh, getting Shadow Blade on DK. Simply because the damage output isn't too bad, especially if you're splashing it off the first hit from the Shadow Blade. You could actually splash about quite a bit of damage. DK is not a bad chaser. And considering that this is a tournament version, uh, DK's Dragon Tail, even in, in the Dragon form, is still like 150 range. I'll, huh? what, what's the range on, on Dragon Tail? Is it 150? Doesn't say. It's like really like 140, one, like a really melee short range stun. So um, having Shadow Blade and giving you another ability to catch up and escape, it's not a bad way to go about it. Here we go. Looks like Jules waiting for the 14 rune. Unfortunately for him, it's going to spawn on the bot. It's going to be a regeneration. Storm would love to pick that one up, but now Jules maybe trying to set up a gank on the top lane. Pinoy sends some things up, so he's going to back off. So despite the fact that Pinoy is playing against uh, the most difficult lane, he's actually doing quite okay. Level 7 and a half, phase boot already up. A thousand going to bank. Meanwhile, Lifestealer going on someone on the bot lane. Got a kill. Are they going to keep on going as we see May going down once again? May's got like four deaths already. Let me check real fast. May's got seven deaths. Holy shoot. I mean, he, he's helping his team getting kills, but... I think, to be honest, I think he's playing way too aggressive than his hero allows him to, because he's a lion, he's a, he's a low HP hero. 
Life Stealer picks up a, another kill. Like, like uh, Lotus getting free kills here and there on the life uh, on the line quite a bit. He's getting uh, free kills on tower, and looks like they're gonna keep on pushing. As we don't have any type of defense coming in from the dire side, do we have TP scrolls? We don't have a TP scroll here. We do not have a TP scroll here. This is very uncharacteristic of a pro game. As like half the team don't have TP, we have a zip here for RR. Gush is gonna be there. They're gonna kill Lich before he does anything. Great, great impale to grab three, but not enough to stop their advance. We did not have chain frost up, and Jules gotta be somewhat careful. Dragon Tail goes on a low. The can it chase him down? Yes, he does. Nicely done. And DK is gonna be really tanky. Here comes Sven as well. They do have a storm ball, a miracle, and trading that kill on Lich against the life stealer. Great trade. Here comes the storm Stir. You gotta be careful. Uh, he's gonna be stunned down. Do we have the uh, hex? Do we have hex? Do you have so ring so far. Double kill going to triple kill going to Jules and Aki's gonna go down for sure because you know Lion's gonna have the mana. Soaring coming off cooldown 13 seconds gonna pop the one as well. Hex, 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 where your hex that he does not have the hex. Hex wasn't on cooldown or anything. Uh impale's gonna miss. Nice. Did I say it's gonna miss? It's gonna hit for sure. That was a blind impale, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, where's the fire breath spam? Looks like Sven's gonna pick that kill. That was a very, very long chase. But nicely done nonetheless. Jules got a triple kill over there. He's gonna have a shadow blade finish. And well guys, he is gonna be opponent hard. And I do mean poning hard, because he's gonna do so much damage. Pino is gonna set up a gank on the top lane here. Do they have Sensual War? That's the question here. Oh, there is a Sakuchi. Sensual War on the ground. Shackle shot. Shackle shot. They're out of there's Shackle shot. Can he go into time lapse? Time lapse? Time lapse? Time lapse? Time lapse? Oh, time lapse on cooldown. He's still not out of the woods yet. He will have time lapse right now if he wants to use a storm sip zips in. Uh oh, uh oh. Power shot, power shot, no mana for the power shot. And he's still seen, he's still seen, maybe he's trying to TP out, power shot's gonna find him! Did it miss? Was it too short? Sakuchi, he's gonna run right past the ward, there's a gush! Nicely done, that chase went forever, but I guess, I guess he did not know where the sentry ward was, because he ran, he literally keep running in the sentry ward, so that's very unfortunate. Maybe even a misplayed, um, generally... Should be really knowing where the Sentry Ward is. Um, there is a DK, he does have Shadow Blade, but unfortunately for him, there is a whole bunch of Sentry Ward down, so they will know DK is coming even if he pops in. There is a smoke coming in right now. They're going to find, yep, there you go. These guys will auto target, acquire. Mirko is going to be in trouble. Does he have the Ravage? Still 35 seconds. There's going to be a hit into a Dragon Tail. Hit into a Dragon Tail, hit into a Dragon Tail, Dragon Tail, Dragon Tail, Dragon Tail. There's a Dragon Tail. And uh, they're going to get that kill for sure. Jules, get the last hit with this Fire Breath, and I think they could transition into push. We were trying to defend the mid lane here from Loda, who, by the way, has his armlet done, has his treads done, and still 2k gold in the bank. I wonder if he's going to go be going for... Well, Monkey King Bar is a good choice here. Um, maybe he's going to go for AC, maybe he's going to go for Heart. Uh, the life still has a lot of choice. Lot uh, excuse me, the Orchid wouldn't be bad against the Weaver. Very versatile carry in terms of getting many hero. Looks like the tower is going to get brought down. Goof is up, and they're going to be tanking this one because they're so tanky. Vanguard up on Sven and Treads. So he, he's actually getting quite a bit of gold, which is nice here for Sven because Sven actually does quite a bit of damage. Sven diving very aggressively. Got to be really careful as he's tanking a lot of Serpent Wards as well. Here comes Lich. He's level 6, just barely. And looks like they're gonna turn around. I do really like what Liches did here. Normally Liches will keep just killing, you know, Dark Ritual or Sacrifice and, and everything. But I like the fact that he has gotten a level of uh Oh, they're going to cancel a TP right here. Do you want the Chain Frost? Nova Blast in position. They're use the Rage just to run away, but Sakuchi will be able to chase up Lich. Chasing, chasing. We have a Nova Blast. Cool down on the Nova Blast. No mana on the Nova Blast. The Eat a Creep, son. They're going to keep chasing like crazy. He can invest in a Creep. No mana just for that load. A very low. It's going to pop his armlet. Wool Dota style. And it's going to turn right back. And Jay, it's going to go down on the tower. He's used a time lapse to get out here. Meanwhile, Sven got the double kill on the top lane. Sorry for missing that one as we watch a kill. As you see, Stormstrike got one kill, and there's a pull right on Jay. Jay under top focus. He does not have his time lapse anymore, taking quite a bit of damage. And, and PyCat is going to get the kill. What are you doing, Weaver? You could have got out. I don't know. Okay. But Stormstrike got a double kill. That double kill is literally free as these guys dive like crazy. It looked pretty good because the rest of the team was engaging on the top lane, so they knew that there was no TP support coming in. And that's why they were able to dive so so bravely but storm Spirit came out nowhere to dd rune and you know made him pay sven getting a double kill that means he's gonna have a lot of gold to work towards his next item i guess he's gonna upgrade his magic swan and then maybe going for a blink dagger or maybe going for a little bit of more utility drums wouldn't be bad um to increase his uh, movement speed and his team's movement speed that would be really really helpful or maybe he's gonna go for bkb 
Um, seems like he's farming quite a bit. Blink Dagger Initiation will be really nice as well. A lot of options in terms of what this fan could get. And as these guys going to go on the high ground, there's a gush on the ledge. She does not have to chain for us. Just used it earlier. We have the teammate support. Lion's going to get a dream and impale. And these guys trying to split up. Uh oh, oh, Lich in a little bit of trouble. Lion not really in position to help out. He should have dropped the impale when he had a chance to do so against a rage lifestealer. He could not have done any. Here's a zip right in. Will they have true sight? No, they do not. A pull and a couple of right clicks. Gonna get the kill. Then XP is showing really, really good chains on here. Getting off some very important kill on that Weaver, keeping him down. How we're doing on the Weaver? He is going for Lincoln Sphere. This is actually a very, very common item, especially on uh, Philippine Dota. Won't be surprising at all if he's going to go into Lincoln Sphere into BKB. As we see a lot of new going right on Jewels, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Infest into a Storm Sword, initiate with a Storm Pull. Loda comes out with Infest, and the right click starts. And that's exactly what we saw. We saw DK going from 100% health down to 0. Gem is up on the Life Stealer, so you cannot count on Shadow Blade. XP, not faced by any of Mineski's strange item choices. And they're saying, dude, we're going to counter you hardcore. A kill goes on Mineski. As they're going to go on the high ground to do a little bit of pressure, mid lane here, May gets pinged and he seemingly does not know what's going on, he's got to back off now, looks like he is going to be going for a staff of wizardry, I hope that's a 4 staff, because he, boy, he needs that survival. Aki and Ty Hunter is going to find himself a lion, and oh, lion's going to take a gale to the face, a couple more hits going to do it, yeah, May's going to be out of position, there is a gush on him as well, what, where is he going to, he's going to go for Aki, and Pale does get on too, he does hex another, but he's going to go down as well, I have no idea what May is going for, he does drop a finger of death, that might set up a kill for Aki, Mackie will get a little bit of help from Mecha. He's going to TP out just fine here. Great play from XP. Saving each other and have still have no idea what May is doing. As he's up to 10 deaths now. I No, 8 deaths. Okay, so 1 death since last time in check. But still, he's playing really, really bossy. And, uh, well, again, he knows best. But I'm just saying. I am just saying. Back on the bottling here, it looks like DK is uh, farming up a little bit. Lich trying to get some EXP. Boy, he nu he needs level 11. Um, and he needs more level of Frost Armor as well. So, uh, really, Jewel string some of that EXP, which will be really, really nice for him. Looks like in the bottling, we had a huge gang on Sven. And the wards are just up in the enemy jungle. So far, if you look at the Dire Division, what do they see? They see nothing. What do they see here? They see here, these wards were put down quite a while back. Uh, but really, they do not have even the guts to move so far into the enemy territory because just passing your second tier towers you're into the radiant territory because it seems that you're getting ganked in your own jungle so right now what the dire side need to do is de ward up and try to get some uh, vision back and uh well the supports will need gold to do that smoke of the sea is up on the line maybe they're trying to set up a gank maybe we did have uh oh uh oh jules get a t got a tower kill and looks like he's gonna tp out just fine. Yep, they're looking for him. Drew is gonna level up his dragon form as well as, of course, his dragon tail. Um, one of the big distinct distinction here from, I guess, a uh, Miniski Dragonite and many other Dragonite is that Miniski's dragon like goes into battle a lot. He farms a lot. He goes into battle a lot. And leveling up dragon tail will put your stun at 3.25 seconds. And uh, leveling up your your elder form. Not as good for pushing, but really good for splashing damage in a team fight. And again, considering that Miniski loves to put their DK in early game engagement, using that Shadow Blade, using that early BKB, you could do quite a, quite a bit of work. As we see the team smoked up, they are going to find Storm Spirit. Oh, come on! You know it's Illusion, and that's why your smoke did not cancel, so May. Making very questionable play here. Stormbolt is going to find Storm Spirit right now. And looks like we have... Oh, Storm Spirit just got ripped. We see double damage on a Sven. Chain Frost doing mass amount of bounces. They're going to find Miracle. And here comes the Weaver. Miracle's down. He do does not have the Chain Frost anymore. He did have the Blink Dagger really well farm on Miracle. But he's going to get chased down uh, by these guys. I think. I think. Chase him down, guys. Chase him down. As we see, Lich forced to take the kill. Because you don't want him to blink away. We do have Desolator being completed up here on... Uh oh, uh oh, Pino is gonna get stunned to death. There you go. XP showing a slight mistake here, being out of position. Loda not in position to help him out. And it looks like Loda might be in a little bit of trouble. He does have a TP scroll, but here we go. Jules, oh, he's gonna try to TP out. Will he have it? Will he have it? Yeah, barely made a TP, so good rage TP. Fully knowing that Jules was right on his butt. And uh, Loda, fine now. He's gonna pick up Death later. Should be dropping his Quelling Blade for a 
for a TP scroll. But no, it looks like he's he's okay for now. Having Desolator up, he could actually melt supports very easily. And this support is in, gonna be in the form of May, who is in territory, enemy territory once again. And we'll just feed yet another kill. <laughs> Dire side completely suspecting that there is a ward up here. And they would be correct if they do suspect so. Jay farming for a long time. Still have no Lincoln Sphere finish. I wonder if there's anything on the crow. There's a Lincoln Sphere recipe, so he's just missing the voice stone. But 25 minutes in, we have the Lincoln Sphere finish. He has no boots yet, so he's doing no plus damage. And evidence of you know the Tie Hunter was running around forever here because the Weaver just don't do enough damage to, to do anything. Right now in this team fight, uh, you know XP could just ignore the Weaver for a long time. He is going to be in an issue later on. But right now, they're going to be completely okay. As we see the uh, Roshan attempt being set up here, Loda with that Desolator will do a lot of minus armor on Roshan. So they can bring him down if they gotta stay long enough, but I don't believe they're going to allow him to do so. And actually, Loda is going to go right on Boots, which is going to get shackled up, and he's going to go down. It's going to be a 4v5 team fight if the Weaver decided to TP in. Weaver, by the way, has no TP scroll either. Does he have one on chicken? No, he doesn't. They're going to just give up the Roshan for free. And if you give it to the Storm Spirit or Loda, that could mean big trouble. Yeah, it looks like the Dire Side is not going to defend it at all. So if you're not going to defend it, why was this Ven right here? I had no clue. Who's going to pick up the Aegis? Looks like Storm Spirit is going to pick it up here. They do know Jules is around. They have Gem as well. Are we going to have Infest into the Storm? Are we going to have Infest into the Storm? Uh oh, go into... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forced F up, they're going to try to chase Jules, Jules going to ditch into a fog and will be TPing out, I hope, TP on CD, TP out, TP out, TP out, you don't want to stay around, you don't want to find out, they have a Storm Spirit, they have a gem, they will find you, looks like really gutsy play, no he's finally going to TP out, back on top lane here, Loda is going to TP to the top lane and keep getting that farm, he's melting these guys. Weaver Lincoln is up. He does have treads coming in, I suppose. No, just a TP scroll. So really, really poor on this Weaver. Generally, that that's when when you finish Radiance. To be completely honest here. Twenty eight minutes in. So right now, where's the DPS coming from from the Dire side? I guess DK is going to do quite a bit of DPS, uh, given the fact that he has Dragon Form up and looks like he is going to set up a gank. Storm Sir might be in a little bit of trouble. No, he's going. You realize he cannot catch it, uh, the storm. So going to be using his dragon form to do a little bit of farming and pushing. He's really not afraid of getting ganked. He has a BKB TP and there's really nothing the Radiant side could do about it. I mean, you could kill DK with physical damage, but considering that he's got 18 armor, it's going to be fine. So he could uh, he's allowed to farm this aggressively. And sorry for missing the top kill. We had a four-man smoke gang against Lifestealer. And of course, May immediately hex Impale Stormbolt, and they just nuked him down, and I do believe you could transition into a push. Meanwhile, DK is just pushing the tower on the bot lane, so at the very least, we're going to get some tower damage, and also maybe a tower kill on the top lane, or get his finish on a Storm Spirit, and that's going to be key, especially against Weaver. Lincoln Spirit is going to block a, a spell here, Shackle Shot. Weaver is going to TP out, meanwhile Dragonite doing work, nicely done. Uh oh, very bad time to pause. Disconnected? Is Weaver disconnected? Okay. At the very least, he's not in the fight, but Sven might be in trouble. The question is whether Tie Hunter will be using his Ravage just for a Sven kill. I don't know, you guys think, is it worth it? Is it worth it to use a Ravage just for a Sven kill? I mean, Sven is fairly farm. He's definitely going to be a force later on. So, you know, you guys debate whether a Ravage is going to be necessary. I don't think they do actually need a gush and a of course four staff on the on the windrun. They should be able to catch him up. Uh, you can actually save your ravish, especially if the Lich decides to come out and help, which he definitely will. It looks like we're gonna be going right back in the game. Here we go. Here we go. There's a four staff up, shackle shot for the mini sun. Gale is gonna hit Storm Star zips right in for the Lich. He's gonna miss all his mana down the drain. He has to use a no, he they don't even need a ravish. Just a couple of uh, right clicks is gonna do the right. Look at how tanky that Sven is though. Just tanky, the physical right hits of four heroes for such a long time. Meanwhile, on the bottling here, Jules 
keep on pushing that lane. He's up to another 2k go in the bank. He is actually going to be doing a lot of work. Whether it's going to be getting an AC or something else. I don't think he should be going into... Well, Satanic is a decent choice. Although Satanic's not going to be too useful, especially... Again, oh, Weaver, what are you doing, my friend? Got to be really careful. There is a gem up on the Weaver. Because they did get a kill on Loda. I do believe you're, you're better off killing that gem. Because what are you going to use it for? Counter? I guess you could use it for counter ward a bit. And then you should kill it. Um, uh oh, they know where, where May is. May has a 4 staff. But, uh oh, uh oh. These illusion runes going to find him. He's going to be in complete big time. He's going to 4 staff out and go for the TP. Oh, this. Oh. oh, they did get a kill. Nicely done. Blink into Gush here by Mirko. Nice still doing the right click. Fortunately here for uh, for May, that's yet another death. Check out the farm a little bit here as we see 146 on Life Sealer, 114 on the Stormster, 87 on Windrunner, and 56 on the Venom So decent farm here coming on the Radiant side. But look at the Dire, 162 on the Dragon Knight. His farm is unstoppable and really... How are you going to stop him from farming? You got to have like a 3 or 4 man gank. 137 here on J. Uh, not the best farm, especially for a weaver that's mostly free farming, to be completely honest. Aside from the time that he's getting ganked, which is really rare. He's really just getting free farm. 50 on the rest of these guys, Lich has 27. So pretty good spread overhaul. Again, no defense here coming from Mineski. Mineski just says, okay, we're going to just trade tower and trade farm. It looks like it's going to be Assault Curious as we see a Hyperstone on DK. Although, that could also mean I'm Monir. Mjolnir, because that's definitely a possibility. So Dragon Knight looking for a kill, as we see a jump here for the Weaver. Weaver is gonna Sakuchi out. Are they gonna use a Ravage for him? Looks like they are not for now. Do we have True Sight? Is that's a question. They don't have True Sight. Swarm is gonna drop on these guys, which is gonna mean free gold for everyone. Weaver is still no TP scroll. He should be really pick up treads right now. Uh, sell his Ironwood branch and go for a TP. I still don't know why he's holding on to that gem. What does he need it for? No clue. Dragonite farming everywhere. It is going to be an assault curious. Okay. So going for the armor route, which is not a bad way to go about it. Although the life stealer doesn't really care about that much because uh, with this feast, he's taking percentage of your health. So armor doesn't really reduce that. But we'll reduce the you know the physical right click of that life stealer. Would or get another gem up here on the storm spirit, and if they find this DK, if the this DK pokes his head out a little bit, he might be in a little bit of trouble. We are approaching a farming stage, and in a farming stage, having sight is so important. If you look at the mini map, who has sight and who doesn't? Well, we have wards up on the Radiant. Let's go into Radiant Vision a little bit. They do, at the very least, see this portion of the map. And uh, they're going very deep. And we're going to see a Venomancer drop a ward up here. We have an Infest here on Copycat. And if they see anyone, and I do mean anyone, that person is dead. And there's a very high chance that he might be May as he's teeping out. Weaver, got to be very, very careful. Weaver might have a chance of survival given the fact that he does have Lincoln, Time Lapse, and Sakushi. But still. Mineski getting farmed despite the fact that they're sensing everyone's missing. Another tower being picked up here by XP. As that came for free. As we have a teleportation going on the top lane here in the form of a Windrunner. That's not going to defend against the Weaver. Dragon form going right in. I don't think they could really get a kill on Loda. They do have about 5 seconds of stun. There's a Dragon Tail. They got a chain stun this one perfectly. Nice chain stun here. And they are going to bring him down. Perfect play. Perfect chain stun here from Neski. And Loda, does he have buyback? No, he does not. Looks like this might be an attempt to do some damage as we see a huge dive on the top lane. They're chasing the Weaver. And Weaver is just making them waste a lot of time. Even to get this kill on the Weaver, the bot rack's in complete trouble right now. What is XP doing? This is not experienced play. TP to defend your base. They're going to get the Weaver kill? Maybe. No. They miss the last set on him as well. Tower goes down on DK. And DK is going to go for Rax. Or do we sense? Are we going to finally TP back? Still no TP on anyone. As we see this melee racks just go this might just be the easiest racks I've seen Maneski take down in the Premier League. A huge blunder coming out here from XP. Maneski says, okay, we'll take this one for free and go home. Alright guys, get out. Juice, juice, come on. Come on. You don't want to stick around, man. 
You don't really need to farm 14 gold serpent wards, right? <laughs> and he might just be regretting his decision, as he could have got out. He's gonna use BKB team. That's fine. But that was his first BKB duration, right? Yeah, that was his 10 second BKB just for a TP. Uh, when he could have just backed off. So those 14 gold serpent wards, they were expensive. Uh, but anyways, they got a rack, so they're okay. It is gonna be drums on our Sven. Lich uh, going for very tanky. I like this. Uh, might be going for. Might be going for uh, gold scepter. To be completely honest, given the fact that there's so many physical DPS on the radiant side, so not bad. Uh, this fan gotta be really careful. They should know that there's a gem on storm. So, uh, meanwhile, Weaver here has another thirty uh, three thousand gold to bank. Probably gonna be going for the. Uh, going for the relic now. Uh, so we see life stealer. Uh oh. For anyone that cares, here's a little bit of mathematical thing I've did in the past: uh, calculating damage um, of Desolator versus Maelstrom against highly armor heroes. And by highly armor hero, I mean like DK, DK with uh, Dragon Blood and Frost Armor. Mathematically. Maelstrom gives you more DPS, uh, simply because of the lightning proc does magical damage. But that is only in a 1v1 situation. The minus armor your entire team could benefit from. So you could definitely make a good argument on both sides, what is the better item here for Loda to pick up. But um, that is the, the item route he went for, it's going to be a Desolator. Which I mean, look at this DK right now. 20, 35 armor without frost armor right now. They're gonna make a huge dive for jewels, but he has the Lothars, and he's gonna pop the BKB and just TP out. And he's gonna make it out fine. That's the second BKB duration, and I mean, it's it's fine because he's not dying. But these BKB durations are very expensive because 10 seconds of perma right click on Dragonite in a team fight is just absolutely huge, and he's using these to run, which is again, it's okay because he's not dying, but. It's a big investment. May no longer has he been playing as aggressive. Gonna be farming in his jungle instead. Has a four staff. It's gonna be going for point boost. I don't think he really needs to go for Axe Scepter to be completely honest here. I think Ghost Scepter again it would be the decent choice. Or a Cyclone. Any type of um, survival item really. Uh, I don't think he really needs to do more damage at this point of the game. His his stuns is just simply invaluable. Maybe he's a little bit worried about the fact that he does not have mana to cast every single spell. So the extra mana in the point booster is helpful. But I think Ghost Scepter or the Yule Scepter gives you the mana to do so, right? As you see a huge push on the top lane here. Do we have TP scrolls? I'm on these guys. These guys have TP scroll. It looks like they will be TPing right now. Meniski have to defend this because it is Rax time. I hope. Any defense come? Any defense? Relic is up. Are they waiting for Radiance? Glyph is used. Still no hero in position. Looks like they are TPing right now. Swarm's gonna initiate and just give Cypher now. Tower is gonna go down. And here comes Sven. He's gonna be doing some sort of tank. DK maybe waving for the cooldown. He is gonna go in right now. Ravage. They're baiting for the Ravage. Rack's gonna be taken down. And looks like... Are, are, now, are they now gonna go in? Mineski just gave up a Rax for free. The hell are they doing? I'm literally speechless. How easily both team took each other's Raxes. But okay, the game's even now. At the very least, let's check out the gold difference charts. It is 25,000 or 2,500 lead on the radiant side, but that means nothing. 38 minutes in. Three kill advantage here for the radiant side. Tower advantage. We have one exterior towers left. Or the radiant side, so again, not a huge advantage, especially this tower's at 300 HP. Like, DK could backdoor this if he really wanted to. Um, Dragon Knight up to Helm of Dominator, no li no buyback, and in, in both cases, the carry in this game should need to get a buyback. It's, it's so easy to set up a storm gank. Maybe maybe Jewel's very comfortable with the fact that he does have BKB, so he's not really afraid of holding onto a buyback. And he would be right because his BKB will make him invulnerable, literally, against these guys. Roshan will be spawned, and Roshan is up, so they can go for him. I don't know how he has lost mana. <laughs> That's very interesting. How do you lose mana on Roshan, right? Do we have a Lion Drain? Mana Drain? No, he doesn't have Mana Drain, so I have no idea how he actually lost mana. 
But anyway, this ward will see DK just skirting by earlier on. No, it looks like he... Uh... XP fully suspecting a Roshan. What Weaver need to do right now is get yourself a damn TP scroll and start pushing out on the top lane. Right now the XP team knows that there's no TP on the Weaver, so they do have a, a momentary 45 advantage if they decide to fight. Looks like the team is uh, very, very scattered up. He does TP. No, where's the No, he has Radiance now. Okay, great, but someone needed to push out this top lane with the TP scroll and have the ability to rejoin the team fight. Weaver's the best hero in that to do that because he has the Gucci. Um, Looks like both teams backing out from Roshan. Whoever gets the Aegis, by the way, might just win the game. Like the advantage, the, the two teams are so even at this point that uh, Aegis advantage might just be too much for the other team to come back from. Uh, provided that both teams, you know, stay in position and everything, which might not be the case. Considering of the questionable plays we've been seeing so far. Of course, this is game number one of the best of two series between XP and Mineski. We'll be coming at you guys with game number two after this as well. So don't go anywhere. If you guys miss any game so far, the VODs will be up on DotaCommentators.com. Uh, just check uh, check out the website and then check on the Premier League page. And uh, you will see all the VODs available there as well. XP, um, so far undefeated in the Premier League. They won 2-0 against Dignitas the other day. Trying to do the same here against Mineski. Mineski just had an 0-2 defeat against SK. And they're trying to win a game here. They're actually looking at a very decent, very comfortable position. Because if you look at all five of their heroes, right? Let's look at the support first. Lich probably not the best late game support hero there is. Oh no, another free stuff. This is a freebie for XP here. Yeah, this is a free Aegis, literally. I think they're giving up too many freebies. They gave out like three for four free towers. And what are they getting in return? They're just pushing the creep equilibrium on top. I don't think that's a suitable return. And these guys, I'm sure these times should... Loda has no TP. Storm does, right? Storm could TP in. Yes, he's going to carry the Loda in him. And these guys are coming back. Stormster is going to zip right in. Vest coming out. They're going to go on May. Can he bring down? Looks like Dragon Knight doing a lot of right click. His life stealing as well. Slashing the damage. It's going to focus on Loda. Loda might be a little bit trouble. Loda's going to try to right click. We have buyback. It's a question of May. is going to be okay. And looks like Rabbit links right in. Copycat did die, but he had the Aegis right now. Stormbolt's going to go right on Copycat. Copycat's dead. And DK still doing the right click. Look at DK. Oh my goodness. Frost Epicenter being dropped left and right. Lyx does not have the buyback. Do not chase. Do not chase. Just go for the Rex. Don't. Who cares if you kill the Windrunner? Who cares? Kill the Rex. Kill the Rex. They spent a good time chasing. It looks like Windrunner might be chase, doing the chase herself. These guys are very, very low HP. But they, at the very least, they could have did some damage on the tower. But no, they're going to turn back now. But it's a very big win here from Mineski. Kill the Storm Stare with the Aegis, kill them again, kill the Life Stealer, no one buys back, simply because they didn't have to. But that just totally nullified the advantage that we momentarily had on XP. And DK's not done yet, he's still looking around and Venomancer says, oh shoot, I can't even get out of my base right now. So I gotta back off. And this is the beauty of having a Shadow Blade on DK. Sometimes you get Shadow Blade on DK in a pub and people ask, like, what the hell are you doing? And you ask them, have you, do you know who Mineski is? You know who Jules is? You see he was able to free farm the entire game. And he wasn't ganked. Or he couldn't be ganked. BKB being very helpful. And Shadowblade being very helpful on that. And also if anyone ever goes in your lane. You could threaten them to kill them. Not many melee heroes could do that. But Shadowblade on DK can. So he's just really content to free farm over the lane. And given the fact that he is a range splashing hero. A late game. I mean really not worry about the late game as well. Given that fact that he also has Weaver to help him out. Weaver still no boots yet. But now has added a vid booster to his uh to his survivability. I don't. I when when whenever you're up against a, a life stealer, you you have an interesting choice. Like, do you get the extra, do you get the heart? I mean, heart's nice, but then that also means that life stealer could life steal more from you and do more damage to you, cause feast. Or do you pick up a um a butterfly and use that evasion? As you see, another gank coming here. They need a perfect initiation. There's a zip. We need perfect chain stun. Shackle shot for the mini stun. BKB TP. BKB Lothar out. 
Oh, you should have TP. You're not gonna have a time to TP now, Jules. You're gonna be in complete trouble. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead for sure. There's a silence on him as well. You're using Dragon Form just to run, and they could transition right. Oh, there's a four staff. There's a three man impale. BKB used on copycat. Out of mind at this point. Chain Frost on nothing. But BKB being used, Dragon Form being used, and this just means that the XP team can push if they want to do so. But unfortunately for them, Creep Glorium really in favor of the Mineski. It looks like there's a mid tower still up. So one extra tower still up on XP. So even though that uh, Jules just used, all, oh, he did not have a TP scroll. He is gonna go for Reaver. Gonna be finishing his Satanic really, really soon. And once, oh my God, once DK finishes the Satanic, how do you bring down this guy? That is a legitimate concern. How do you bring down 2,600 HP? What is this? 50 armor? Life steal. Satanic has what? 100% life steal for like three or four seconds. That sounds about right, 100%. That sounds, actually, that sounds really broken. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see when he upgrades it. But it's an insane amount of lifesteal, and he has BKB to make sure he gets that lifesteal. You don't have something like a dragon, or you don't have something like a Beastmaster Roar to keep him in place. But in any case, Minis Minesky says, okay, we're, we're going to go versus you guys a late game. As long as they don't give up like a free Roshan or a free Rax, like they did. They should be okay, but they're going to fight this team fight without the Weaver. Mineski, calm down, guys. I know you guys have the late game. Here comes initiation on the Sven. He's going to pop his BKB. He's going to pop his BKB and TP. You know, I still stand by the fact that these BKB charges are being going to waste. Like, you just, you don't have to be out of position. You can be in position and save those BKB charges. And we've seen uh, Jules use his BKB three or four times to use escape, just to escape, not even in team fight. And Sven just uses BKB now, so that means he won't have the BKB in this team fight, and that might be an issue. Fifty-one armor on our DK friend, and here we go. The team fight is gonna break out. Are we gonna have Dragon Form as we see this? Rax taking quite a bit of damage. Right now, Jules gotta be very careful about his Dragon Form usage. Because if XP sees the Dragon Form being used, all they have to do is back up and wait it out. And then fight the team fight then. So Tanya is up. How much lifesteal? 175% lifesteal. Holy shoot, I thought it was 100%. Apparently not. And no! Sven out of position again! And this time he won't have the BKB. Mineski, come on, you guys are better than this. It's going to be a 4v5. If the XP decides to push... And looks like they are looking for that as they're swinging on the bot lane. The mid tower is going to take some damage. I don't think it will go down, although th all the range creeps are focusing it down. Should be. No, it might just actually go down. And that might be big for some of these guys to get buyback gold. We will have buyback gold. DK does not. But he has satanic BKB, so I don't think he's actually going to die. May should have buyback gold. Lich might have buyback gold as well. He has a 4 staff. No, nope, the tower is going to survive with 200 HP. And here we go. Sven's going to be back to 30 seconds. So we do have quite a bit of time for XP to set up. They do have every single ultimate. Taking a little bit of time for now. And Jewel's got to be very careful. Because it doesn't matter if you have satanic BKB. If you're chained on the death. And they do have hex to open it up from a far range. My cell phone's ringing, but I don't care. It's still the more important right now. And here we go. They're going to focus on the racks. And there's a dragon form being used. They're going to go on Pino. There's a zip in for May. Rabbit comes in from the miracle. And can they bring down everyone? RR is going to drop down before using the chain frost. DK, 1v4 situation. He's chasing the wind runner. You can see his HP being dropped down. Are you going to use your life steal? Are you going to use a life steal, DK? He's going to be doing a fine job right now. He is life stealing. But look at Nyx doing so much life steal. He's going to out DPS jewels. No, he's gonna Dragon Tail going right on XP Loda. But Loda's gonna be A OK. He's actually chasing Jules. You can see his HP is so high. Then he's turning target to Sven. Sven's gonna go down. DK in a little bit of trouble. Weaver doing a lot of work. DK's gonna defend. Aki goes down. Team fight all over the place right now. As we see it, four for two. I'm sure we had some buyback going on. DK definitely did not die in the team that team fight. They defended. They lost the base tower, but can they get anything in return? Roshan is not back up. Uh, Creep Galibrium all in favor of the XP team. So even though XP just lost a huge team fight, they're in no danger of losing any more structures. So they should be fine for now. And in fact, someone please defend your buildings. Jeez. Don't want to give up this tower. 
it's it's the goal that means so much for the radiant side right now. Radiant side really just had to jump for it, sensing it was a four v five situation with Sven dead for a bit. But despite of that, DK is just he doesn't care. They cannot kill off that DK. Nice dealer, despite being one of the best tank killer in the game, just cannot do enough damage against a fifty armor Dragonite who's life stealing like crazy. So I think that last engagement just showed that XP just does not have the late game secured. They don't have the DPS output. Uh, let's do a very late game uh, item check. They are gonna lose a mid tower, but I don't think I don't think uh, Minisky is gonna stick around. They might. Lich is in position. He will have Chain Frost up in just a bit. Four staffs up on him. He had it up in, in before that last team fight as well, and that definitely helped him survive. Did I say that he did not drop his Chain Frost in the last fight? He did. Uh, but I didn't see it bouncing anywhere, so... And even if he did, the damage output of that Chain Frost... Probably not nothing too big, to be completely honest here. Alright, let's look at item progression. As we see the gold difference chart, no difference! Look at how even this game is. <clears throat> okay, so we have a heart finish on the Weaver. And, uh, you know, I already talked to you guys about... You know, not too sure whether Butterfly is better or Heart is better than Dragonite. You gotta be really... He does have buyback, I presume. Yeah, he does have buyback. But still... Um, four staff is up on the Lich, Dragon Knight has Shadow Blade, Satanic, AC, BKB, Treads. We're 15 minutes in, and it looks like he might get ganked. Does that BKB TB? Gonna go low dart right now. He senses people coming, gonna TP out immediately. Good job here by uh, Jules. And Sven's actually doing something if he doesn't get picked off before the team fight actually happens, or just uses the BKB. So, he has BKB, Drums, and Vanguard. Very tanky. Blink Dagger and Force Sap up on line, so gonna be playing a little bit of initiation. He can actually just stay really far back now. Wait for the team fight happen, and then Blink in or Force Sap himself in. Wimmer has the Mecha Force Sap, Phase Boot, and a, a Hex Stick. So he is really, really big. Uh, meanwhile, we have Medallion Courage, anti under pick out a Plate Mail for a little bit of physical survivability, not a bad choice. BKB up and Orchid up on the Storm Strait, who I presume is working on a Hex Stick, Though he's quite far away from that. Uh, bot tower getting a little bit pushed. Women have to TP back. We have a javelin being purchased on the life stealer. And we don't know whether this is gonna be MKB or a basher. Um, if if this is the latest version, I could a little bit more comfortably say it's the basher. I gotta remove this menu because the team fight is breaking out. Aki in a little bit of trouble here. And here comes Jules. You get a dragon tail on. Oof, that was close. If Loda got Dragon Tail, he wouldn't dead. And on the top lane here, Storm Surit has a TP scroll, will be pushing like crazy. But looks like Mineski going for the game ending push right here. Storm Surit TPing right back. Shadow Shot on two! This is a form initiation. They cannot go on the DK because he's just too tank. Here we go, Blink Ravage getting 3 or 4, Weaver not cutting it, Dragon Knight really low, gotta pop BKB Satanic, he's gonna get brought down, he's live down like crazy, he pops a BKB, but he's gonna go down, getting out DPS at this point, but Lich gets a dominating triple kill with the Chain Frost, just as I was saying that he's not gonna do any damage with the Chain Frost, he just brought down 3 people by himself, Stormbell goes on Pycat, can the Weaver, don't get, don't chase guys, who the kill cares about winning it, just focus on the Raxus, because this is Defense of the Ancients. It was once called Defense of the Ancients. Just kill the structure. Lich, Lich, come on. Right, right click, Lich. Yo. What we doing, guys? Guys! My hand is off my mouse. Now on my face. Meanwhile, through that, we lost the top tower for the dire side. BKB duration down to 7 seconds here for Sven. Sven will have no more item progression to the end of the game, I presume, if the game don't last for, you know, 80 more minutes. Because um, he's really been... Well, he didn't die in the last fight, but he's been really dying a lot. So he's not going to have too much item progression. His spells being really useful, though. Um, Warcry, helpful. Um, the Cleave, really helpful in terms of pushing back these big waves. And simply, he's a threat. He's a threat at this point here. you got to worry about Sven, because he, he actually puts out, you know, 200-something damage per pop. Which is pretty big, so he has a really good stun still. Um, line now is a threat. I've been talking about the late game potential of these heroes, and I never got to make my points. Uh, yeah, Lich is pretty good late game, as you can see in the last team fight. Chain Frost apparently still do mega damage. I'm pretty sure that Chain Frost literally just KS three kills all the damage output by Sven and you know Dragonite. 
Uh, but anyways, Lich can still do quite a bit of damage with the Chain Frost, but more importantly, his Frost Armor is just so helpful against Life Stealer, and a very low DPS output of the Radiant side, so that's ever so important. Line with the Blink Dagger, and he's got Force Half himself out! Uh-oh! Force, Force, he gets Hex, and he's done. Mineski, Heroes, out of position once again, and this means Free Aegis. Weaver somehow got down as well. This is just a messy game on Mineski's side. They had the advantage, but XP might be coming back as they have now the Cheese and the Aegis. Looks like uh, Cheese is going to get passed to PyCat. There's an uh, Ultimate Orb on him as well, so about... 1300 go away. 1400 go away from that hex stick. Weaver, you have a TP scroll. You have 32 seconds down on TP. Is he backdooring? He's backdooring a tower. Yeah, he's backdooring a tower. Which, by the way, backdoor is not against the rule. Just saying. Uh, what he also could do is block off the next couple of creep wave. Oh, he's backdooring the racks. Unfortunately, the tower region. Oh, he has double damage. Looks like we're gonna have a, a, a trade on the throne. Here we go, the tower's down. Misha out of position again. Mineski, come on. Dragonite comes back. He gotta pop the BKB. He has Satanic still. But once he pops the Satanic, he's gonna get chased. And they're trying to focus on Loda. Loda, he's gonna get all the life steal back. He's gonna try to pop Satanic. Where's the Satanic? He's gonna get chased on. Mineski, gonna drop a one game. This was a one game for Mineski. But multiple out of positional plays. And XP. Just, just gonna get that victory, just like that! GG being well played on both sides here. And Mineski goes 0 3 for today. We have one more game coming your way. If these games are any as exciting as this one, we're gonna have a long day. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Of course, on the Premier League Facebook page, we are giving away 10 Dota 2 beta keys. So you could go to the Facebook page to check out more information. I'm Lumis from DotaCommentators.com. And you can check out my Facebook page or my YouTube page as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be coming to you guys with the final game today for the Premier League. Stay tuned.